My name is Steve Zwinger, and I'm an agronomist research specialist at the NDSU Carrington Research Extension Center, located in approximately central North Dakota. Today we're standing in a open pollinated white sorghum uh, seed increase. This is a result of uh, work that has been done for a number of years that has been funded by SARE. And what we're trying to do is find adapted lines that will mature in North Dakota um, as, as, as grain sorghum or known further south as Milo is not an adapted crop to the northern regions. Main reason why it's not an adapted crop is because it likes a lot more heat than we get in North Dakota. But we are having some pretty good results in finding some lines that are open pollinated. And for those of you that don't know what open pollinated means is it's non-hybrid and farmers can save the seed back and it'll come back true. So we're looking at these again, white open pollinated sorghum lines that were um, donated to GRIN, the Genetic Resource Information Network, or our government gene bank, and we explored all those types. And this is a result of a number of years worth of work. We started out with many more lines that we screened, and then we're down to some of the most promising lines here that will mature in North Dakota. As you can see, these lines are just starting to head out and pollinate. Given the year we've had in North Dakota, they may not quite make it, um, because depending upon when our frost comes in, we are getting quite late, but there's still a chance. Um, but that's why we do this type of work is to find these lines. And, and, and sometimes the environment given harsh conditions is what will give us the best results. And again, North Dakota has a shorter growing season than many of you or many of the areas that, that sorghum is grown in. And so again, what we can kind of see as we look across this here, there are actually 10 different lines. And so you can see maturity differences, such as this one that's just starting to head out, or this line here where I'm looking at right here that, that has headed out and is starting to pollinate now, meaning it's starting to set seed. And grain sorghum, from time of pollination to seed maturity is not as long as we think of as a corn crop, which so often this crop tends to be grown in areas where corn isn't. This crop has been grown for many years as a replacement for corn for the feed market and also most recently in the ethanol market, particularly where we can't grow corn. But what's one of the driving interests in this crop recently? Again, this is why we chose white sorghum because it has low tannins, or meaning the bitter tasting compounds, and white because it'll be like a nice white flower. So a lot of this is because of the common thing we hear many days, the gluten-free market. This does not have gluten in it, and, um, and that's what's tending to drive that market somewhat for those people that need that alternative to wheat and other products that contain gluten. So what have we found? Well, we found that we can mature so, uh, grain in North Dakota. We've done small plot research with it, and we've actually had some limited field scale, meaning only a few acres. We have achieved in the organic environment, in the certified organic environment, we've achieved up to 65, 70 bushels per acre, which is, is pretty good considering, um, you know, that particularly on this research farm where we are standing in a certified organic field, um, that's some of the highest yields I've had on any crops um, when you look at terms of total pounds per acre. So it shows you that this crop has the ability to tolerate many things from dry conditions to um, lower fertility conditions, and it's very, it's very tough. We don't see a lot of insect problems and other things. So grain sorghum is something that we're looking at, and thank you, Sarah, for funding this project.